Roblox, a video game platform that, I can confirm, does indeed Life. exist. Roblox. <laughs> From tycoons to knockoff games to whatever whatever this is. No joke here, person watching this video. If you really set your mind to it, whatever type of game you want to play, I'm willing to bet that after five nanoseconds of scrolling around, you're going to find something like it on Roblox. But there is one type of, let's call it game genre on Roblox that I reckon is one of, if not the most popular genre on the entire website. A game genre all about having your timbers shivered and your pants shitted. Horror. Yeah, in the year of our Lord 2023 Roblox horror? You can't escape it. It's everywhere. Just look at all of this shit. So, in this video, since Halloween is right around the corner, me and my friends, we're going to be diving headfirst into the good, the bad, the mid, and the downright dog shit of Roblox horror. I can already feel my brain melting out of my ears. Subscribe. <laughs> Please, it's the least that you could do. And join my Discord server. Link in the pinned comment. But first, what makes a horror game good and spooky? Now look, yeah, I'm not gonna sit back in my chair over here and lie on the internet and say, oh, well, me, I, I don't get scared of horror games. I don't jump for shit. My, my testicles are massive. Because I'll be the first person to tell you that when it comes to horror games, I'm a massive bitch boy. When I was younger, my dad played a game called Alone in the Dark, the new nightmare on his PlayStation 1. I couldn't even be in the same house as him. But just because I'm a massive bitch boy when it comes to horror, it doesn't mean that I don't like horror. Because let me tell you, I really, really do. Horror and the concept of horror, it's just something I find so bloody interesting because it's so, so uniquely human. You and me, we're not the same person. We're not Skynet, iRobot, QuibbleCop AI clones of each other. Now, God, no, we're all different. And because we're all different, we're all scared of different things. So what do I think makes a horror game good and spooky? Well, firstly, please, for the love of all that's holy, don't include a jump scare every single fucking millisecond. <laughs> now, I don't hate jump scares. I do actually think they can be effective if they're done correctly. Hello, Mr. Fish from the end of Iron Lung. But as we all know, most of the time, jump scares in horror games are, ooh, look at this scary dark hallway. Or, ooh, I hope nothing happens when I open this door. What's that? A scary knocking on my window? I, I wonder what that might be. Jump scares being used as a crutch to get some artificial scare out of you. It's just so cheap and... Uh, because you're not actually getting scared of what's going on. Nah, you're just reacting to the loud noise obliterating your eardrums. That and having jump scares every single second. After a couple of minutes, you're just gonna get bored. It's the main reason why I can't stand the phantoms in FNAF 3. I really like that game. It's my personal favorite FNAF game. But these phantoms, after five seconds, just... Oh my god, just go away! Just shut the fuck up, stop screaming at me! Up. As I said a few seconds ago though, jump scares, they can be good. You just have to use them sparingly. Don't rely on jump scares to make me go, Oh my god, guys, wow, this is so fucking scary. Oh, Markiplier. Scare me with this entire thing you've made, your entire creation. And that leads us quite nicely into another thing that I think makes a good horror game. Atmosphere. When I'm playing a horror game, even if nothing is happening, even if I'm completely safe, there's no, ooh, less spooky, scary, creepypasta monster anywhere near me. I shouldn't feel safe. I shouldn't feel feel comfortable. The hair on the back of my neck, it needs to be standing up all the time. I need to feel unnerved, uncertain, weary of what my next move may bring. Here's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Subnautica. Hands down, the scariest game I've ever ever played in my 22 years of roaming this earth. If you want to shit yourself, play this game. Play it. Oh my god, this game's atmosphere is horrifying. Most of the time, you're completely safe. But you don't think you are. The endless blue beneath your feet, the strange, distant alien noises filling your ears, and then nothing. Silence. It's horrifying. 
horror atmosphere perfection. It's a game that I want to make a video on sometime. If you want to see that video, comment, uh, I don't know, <laughs> Reaper Leviathan moment. But there we have it. Good scares and goated atmosphere. That's what makes up my what makes a horror game good and spooky checklist. And you know what, person watching this video, my what makes a horror game good and spooky checklist, I'm going to use it as a scorecard in this video. If a game has goated scares, five out of five. <laughs> if it doesn't, I'll, I'll send it to the Shadow Realm, same thing goes for atmosphere. And you know what? I think it's time to get to the meat and potatoes of this video. Okay, what hello! Oh, okay, go, go around the- do you see that corner I'm looking at here? This one. Fucking hell! <laughs> what the hello, buddy. fuck? For the past couple of months or so, when I've been reading through some of my YouTube comments, there's been one, let's call it, a theme of comments that I keep on seeing. Hello, The Beak from The Beak YouTube channel. Play Please play a Phobia. 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 This is Apirophobia, and as you can see, ooh, spooky, scary, yellow back rooms. Ah. Do that jump. Oh god. If you've been paying attention to my channel and watching all of my videos recently, firstly, thank you. But secondly, remember this video I made a couple of months ago? What the internet did to the back rooms? If you want to see this video made real, play Apirophobia. Multiple levels? Check. Entities? Check. It's all there. Thing is though, now I know, trust me I do, I really really don't like the entities in the back rooms, but what I will say is that my preferred version of the back rooms just being an empty singular level that drives you insane. Contextually, that's really, really cool. That's really, really interesting. But from a gameplay perspective, it really wouldn't make for a good game now, would it? Because imagine, right, you load in and then you just walk around forever. It's a walking simulator like Death Stranding. It's not very fun. So I understand that to make a pyrophobia fun, big quotation marks there, fun, you need to put entities in it. It makes sense. That and the majority of the children who play this game probably like entities in the back room. So yeah, okay, making something for your audience. I get it. But... There's one massive problem with apirophobia. The fact that I think it's painfully <laughs> mid. Okay, don't touch it's the coming. star ones. Don't touch the star ones, it says touch the circle. The troglodyte's not good, it's not bad, it's just mid. To start with the things I like about apirophobia though, firstly, seeing custom Roblox avatars in a remake of the OG popular backrooms video and running around the backrooms with my friends <laughs> is really fucking funny. But more importantly, I can confirm that apirophobia, it's a functioning game. Most of the time, which doesn't sound like a high bar to get over, but come on, we're talking about Roblox here, so I'm willing to be a little bit lenient. Most of the games on this website are good luck trying to play them. I hope you like falling through the map every single second forever. That, and considering that this game is about the back rooms, of course it's going to have hundreds of thousands of millions of different levels, so going into it, I was pretty terrified that if I wanted to ever play all of it, I was going to have to play through each individual level once one after each other, but you don't. If you want to, you can just select to play the last level, and I really appreciate that. It gives me some agency over what I want to do. I also like that Apirophobia lets you create custom password protected lobbies for free that aren't a headache to join, because, oh my god. Let me tell you something here, person watching this video. Trying to join my friends on Roblox in the past, it's taken years off of my life. But that's where my praise for Apirophobia ends and my complaints start. I hate to say this, but Apirophobia is just pretty bloody boring. Like, even with my friend Dale playing it with me, after a while, we just got tired of running around and looking for things while dodging baby's first creepypasta monsters. Oh, no, I'm not and if I felt this way playing multiplayer, I can't imagine what it's like solo. 96% of people voted that they'd rather watch paint dry. That, and after a few minutes, this game just becomes a stupidly loud jump scare fest. Something that I can't stand in horror games. I always live. Bro, what the fuck was that bullshit? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay, I just died. Okay, what the fuck? Ow! Can we try again? Though, Apirophobia, it did get one good scare out of me. That jump scare you saw in the beginning of this section. But after that, Dale and me, 
We just got annoyed. So, where do I rank apirophobia according to my what makes a horror game good and spooky checklist? Hmm. For scares, I reckon I'm gonna give it a... Two out of five. Pretty close to the Shadow Realm. And for atmosphere, I think I'm gonna give it a three out of five, which gives Apirophobia a grand total of five out of ten. It's perfectly mid. Not bad, not good, just mid. I don't know if calling Apirophobia mid is a pot nuclear take or anything, but if it is, hey, I guess I'll get ready to get obliterated in the comments section. But let me tell you, what isn't a hot take is calling these next games bad. Because, oh, oh my god. I think I just need to show you. Here's a bit of this video's game theory for you, person watching this video. As somebody who's allergic to touching grass, I spend a shit ton of my time talking to my kittens in Discord. And since I spend so much of my time talking to them, obviously I tell them about the videos I'm going to be making, just like this one. A video all about Roblox horror. As we all know though, they're always listening. So, the other day, while I was strolling through YouTube, I stumbled across this video by a small YouTuber called It's Phil's FR. Go have a look at it. I'll leave it in the description. It's a pretty good video. However, there is one problem with it. It's thanks to this video and this comment to my Discord server that I... Uh, I unfortunately found out about a certain, let's call it, horror game series on Roblox. A game series that, since I played a few of these games, I'm not going to get that time back. The Experience Series. Uh, oh man, where to start with this series? Okay, the first game my friends and I played was called The Night Shift Experience, a game that going into it, we thought was going to have something to do with Five Nights at Freddy's because Night Shift, Night Guard, the animatronics do get a bit quirky at night, Bite of 87. We were so wrong. In The Night Shift Experience, you and your friends play as minimum wage workers. You walk around a bit, pick up food, throw yourself and the food through car windows, to repeat, thanks for coming. But guys, ooh, something's getting spooky. Ooh, there was a man who's ah, spooky. Ooh. Yeah, throughout your time spent cosplaying Sniper Wolf if stealing content wasn't a viable career, you'll start to notice certain scary things happening, like news broadcasts, talking about killers on the loose, writing on the walls and men staring at you Whoa. Oh, what the fuck did you see my name? a ufo just flew over did you not see that there's no. fight there's fight ejection shit what are you look up to say that this game series's story is a fever dream that's one of the biggest understatements ever uttered in human history and it gets so much worse than aliens. Really brace yourself here. In the overall story of the Night Shift experience, you start as a fast food worker, then you die, then you're suddenly teleported to a graveyard in a new game, then aliens start flying around, then you're abducted and probed by them, then you're in your house answering emails that get progressively spookier, then you're walking inside Mount Doom, because uh, raw map at game theory. Oh my god, how far do you have to fucking run to get Man, to Mount Doom? Say, like, I understand that run. fucking Frodo walked forever to get to Mordor, but Jesus Christ. Man. Are you confused? I sure as shit know me and my friends were. But to give this game series a fair try, me and my friends decided to play another installment called The Hospital Experience. Guess what? It's basically the same game! To really put into perspective how similar these two games are though, here we are. Let's compare them. Both games involve you, the player, giving customers three different types of items depending on the setting you're in. In the Night Shift experience, it was food. In the Hospital experience, it was medicine. Both games have you mop up water and pick up some kind of animal in some other arbitrary minigame. When the spooky scary oh he's coming to get me killer gets on the loose, news broadcasts. And there's so much more. I'm just going off what I can remember. But here's the worst thing with these games, besides them trying way too hard to be analog horror, they're just all so boring. I can excuse samey game design if the games I'm playing are fun, Call of Duty, but the experience games, 
they're just not. Sure, in the beginning, I, I will admit it was really fucking funny giving customers the wrong type of medicine on purpose. Oh, and by the way, if you think giving people the right thing matters in these games, <laughs> you're wrong. You can give people anything with no consequences. Good game design. I got your fucking medication uh, right here. Listen, you fucking junkie. I'm going to give you the wrong medicine, so you go into anaphylactic yeah, shock. But after a while, all of these games, they just become so bland. Even if you're trying to take the piss and play them ironically. These games, they're like Dementors. They suck the life out of you. The best way I can describe them is five minutes of actual gameplay dragged out over half an hour. It's awful. I think the only thing I can compliment these games on is that they work. That's it. But now for the part that you've all been waiting for, the ranking. For scares, Solid one out of five. These games they just aren't scary. And for atmosphere, uh, I, I don't know, two. That gives us a grand total of three out of ten. Congratulations. Now go to the Shadow Realm. There is something I find so bloody interesting about all of these experience games, though. You see, all of this shit, it's all the same. And that... That's one of the prime reasons why I think Roblox Horror, for the most part, why it's so mid. So many Roblox Horror games, they just try to clone other Roblox Horror games. For every popular horror game on Roblox, you'll have like 10 others trying to replicate it, and then 10 other, let's call it, spin-off games, like, like Obbies and RPs, all of that cringe shit. And this sea of mid shit games on Roblox, it doesn't end there. Not God, no. If anything, we're just getting started. While we're on the topic of obbies, allow me to introduce to you the next game in this video. This. This obby is very scary. Ooh, it even includes jump scares. So if you're wondering why the gameplay in this segment looks a little bit different than the gameplay in all the other parts of this video, why there's a big block that says live beak reaction at the top left of the screen, it's because the other night I decided to stream this game with my viewers. Let me tell you, if it wasn't for playing this game ironically on stream, I have zero idea how I'd ever get through it. This game? Oh, it really isn't good. But what do you expect? It's a horror obby for God's sake. If you are, for whatever reason, interested in what you do in Escape Mr. Funny's Toy Shop scary obby though, plain and simple, you've been hired as a night guard to look after a toy shop. But things are getting spooky. What? Where did Mr. Funny Dummy go? No. You run around for a bit, navigate through some mediocre parkour, and play through boss sections. Boss sections. Now, credit where credit is due, a boss fight in a Roblox obby. I've never really done something like that before, but it's the thing with these boss sections. If you're expecting something enjoyable, and fun, and interesting, and original, Ha! <laughs> oh no! The first one is a Squid Games knockoff. The second is some weird, infuriating runaway from Big Robot Mr. Funny thing. And the last one is a, let's call it a traditional boss fight. Though, why Mr. Funny is now a giant robot and why me, a night guard, can effectively use a bazooka, I have no idea. I guess it has something to do with the lore. But do you want to know what I find so irritating about this spooky, scary Mr. Funny is coming to bore you, Obby? It highlights another one of the primary reasons why Roblox horror is so painfully mid. 90% of it is all just Obbies. Horror Obbies? They're a plague on this platform. They're all over the place. Hell, not even just horror Obbies. Obbies in general. There's so many of them. It's ridiculous. But let me ask you a question here, person watching this video. If you were to make a horror game of some sort, what type of game would you make? If you want, I'll give you a couple of seconds to work it out. Really use your brain here. I'm willing to bet all of my two shekels that nobody said obstacle course. Horror and obstacle courses, they just don't mesh together. They don't gel. You can't make an obstacle course scary. And that's why 99% of these horror obbies just don't work. They're doomed from the start. But now it's time to rank Mr. Funny Escape Toy Shop Mr. Funny Obby Scare Shadow Realm. I'm not going to waste energy ranking it. Shadow Realm. Oh man, trying to find a good Roblox horror game in the sea of mid is so bloody hard. But that won't stop me. 
life. No, remember in the intro of this video, I said the good, the bad, the mid and the dog shit. Key word there is good. I'm determined to find a good Roblox horror game. My quest is not gonna end with Mr. Funny Funny Man Escape Funny Obby Scary God no. And you know what? After a little bit of scrolling, I think I may have found one. Guys, guys, look, he's, he's blue. He's, he's, he's blue. That means he's scary. Okay, now onto the serious thoughts. And what? Do you think I unironically think Rainbow Friends is good? God, no. this is the most mid game ever. Solid three out of 10 game. This is Frigid Dusk. And I'm not gonna lie here. It goes pretty damn hard. Now, like most other Roblox horror games, Frigid Dusk is a game all about walking around a spooky, scary location, merging your singular brain cells together to try to solve puzzles and dodging monsters that will do everything in their power to vore you. But here's the thing with Frigid Dusk. Unlike so many other Roblox horror games, Frigid Dusk is actually pretty good. Playing through this game with my friends the other night, I'm not gonna lie, I was quite tense, I was quite suspenseful. Every now and then the game did get a good scare out of me. And the main reason why I felt this way, it was all thanks to atmosphere. I'm gonna go ahead and say it, the overall atmosphere found in Frigid Dusk, it's probably the best out of any Roblox horror game I've ever played. Especially in the first part of chapter two, which bit of Frigid Dusk game theory lore here for you, is the recommended chapter to play. Oh my God, I love this. Everything is so so dark and dingy and decrepit and moldy. It's a, it's a chef's kiss. It's so good. But where the atmosphere in Frigid Dusk really shines is in the sound design department. Bro, this shit is peak. I don't know who the Frigid Dusk developers had doing the sound in this game, but let me tell you, they deserve a raise. It goes ridiculously hard. Unlike so many other Roblox horror games that all just use the same stock Sunny V2 dramatic sting sound effect SFX this sound effect, the sounds in Frigid Dusk are genuine. Genuinely, they're quite spooky. You'll be walking around trying to figure out what to do next. You'll turn a corner or open a door and then some amazingly scary sound will fill your ears. It's awesome. Let me put some Safety can help. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> hell. You scared the shit. Fuck. Oh my god. And my praise for Frigid Dusk. It doesn't end with atmosphere. <laughs> oh no. There are plenty of other things I really like about it. For starters, this game is pretty damn fun. Playing through Frigid Dusk, me and my friends, once we got into the swing of things, we never got bored with what we were doing or we never wanted to switch games. Now we were completely immersed in this world. We wanted to keep playing and we never felt that we were just mindlessly running around on autopilot. Which I think is quite a compliment to the overall design of Frigid Dusk. So many Roblox horror games get so boring after five minutes because everything is so, so needlessly monotonous and dragged out. But Frigid Dusk, it's the complete opposite. It. It's so easily digestible. It doesn't feel like it's a game designed to purposely jerk you around with long, arbitrary, meaningless shit in the name of artificially increasing playtime. Nah, God no, it's a game with a clear vision that doesn't overstay its welcome. Oh, and another thing that I really appreciate about Frigid Dusk is that you can have up to eight players in a lobby. As somebody who plays with quite a few people in streams of Roblox with my viewers, you do not understand how much of a headache it is trying to find games that let you play with more than four people in a lobby. This is a really good thing, and I wish more Roblox horror games let you play with more than four people. But, and trust me, I really hate to say this here, I really, really do, but Frigid Dusk, it does have some problems. Not many, but some. It's not the perfect package. Firstly, the monsters in this game, I really, really like their designs, but I'm not gonna lie here. They're kinda underwhelming when they eventually catch up to you. It's just like, oh, there's a monster. Oh no, he's gonna get me mid jump scare. They're also kind of buggy. On the one hand, this is a good thing because it means you can cheese them. But on the other hand, it doesn't really make them feel all too threatening. They mostly just become an annoyance if I'm being completely honest. That, and secondly, another thing that's really annoying in Frigid Dusk are the, let's call them horror obbies you have to play through every now and then. I'm having flashbacks. I don't know what it is with them, but sometimes it feels like you should survive an obstacle. But then you just don't? I don't know if this is a hitbox problem or something. I'm not a Roblox game developer, but what I do know is that, okay, sure, in the beginning, it is pretty funny watching your friends getting obliterated by God's mightiest piston. But after a while, 
It just becomes really, really irritating. With all that being said, though, how would I rank Frigid Dusk? Atmosphere... Oh, but I... Uh, I, I want to say 5 out of 5, but I reckon a solid 4 out of 5 is the right choice. Mainly because the atmosphere in the second part of Chapter 2 is a bit of a downgrade from the first part. It's not bad, but it's not on the same level. In the scare department... Huh... I think a decent 3 out of 5 is in order. The monsters look cool, but they're pretty underwhelming. Combining atmosphere and scares, that gives us a grand total of 7 out of 10. I wish that more horror games on Roblox were like Frigid Dusk. Because, as I said earlier, Roblox horror, for the most part, it's this, this sea of mid. Trust me, I've played my fair share of horror games on Roblox, be it on stream, in private with my kittens, in preparation for making this video. And for the most part, all of the Roblox horror games I've played, they're either broken, really boring, or just copies of each other. Like, for every one popular horror game on Roblox, 25 million obbies that are all the same will come into existence, and they're all filled with AIDS microtransactions. Trust me here for a minute, trying to find a good horror game on Roblox, it took me hours. It was painful. And the thing is, I don't really know why it has to be this way. Why does Roblox horror have to be mid? People have made good horror games on Roblox before. <clears throat> Frigid Dusk. But these games, they're just so few and far between. It's scary. Why? Oh, wait, wait, wait. H hang on. I, I think I know why. Making something good, you know, it requires effort. Putting effort into something. Ugh. Mm, it's kind of cringe, isn't it? With all that being said, though, what do you think, person watching this video? Roblox horror, good, bad, mid, or absolutely dog shit? Be sure to let me know in the comments. And while you're still listening to all of these words and adjectives and syllables coming tumbling out of my mouth, why don't you go watch all of my other videos in full and all of their ads? And happy Halloween. Number 15. Subscribe to the beak. If you don't, you will suffer a severe case of cringe and you are taking part in bozo behavior. Thanks for watching.